Scotty Nation TV. Welcome back to the channel. Click that like button, subscribe to the channel, share this video. We've reached a thousand subscribers. Couldn't have done it without you guys. I am truly grateful. Let's get it. Kenneth Supreme McGriff, born September 19th, 1960, is an American convicted former drug lord and gangster from Queens, New York. McGriff rose to prominence in early 1981 when he formed his own crack cocaine distributing and manufacturing organization, which he called the Supreme Team. Based in South Jamaica, Queens, New York City, New York, under McGriff's leadership, the gang's numbers swelled to the hundreds and came to control the crack cocaine trade in the Baisley Park houses. The neighborhood where McGriff was raised in 1987, McGriff was arrested following a joint state and federal investigation and pled guilty to engaging in a cr continuing criminal enterprise. He was sentenced to 12 years incarceration. McGriff was released from prison on parole in early 1994. After serving five years of his sentence, he was sent back to prison on a parole violation by the end of that year and served another two and a half years before being released again in 1997. After being released from prison on parole in 1994, McGriff tried his hand at cinematography, seeking help from Irv Gotti to film a movie based on the Kenyatta series. However, due to McGriff's reputation, the FBI soon questioned the affiliation with Murder, Inc., which led to, to a raid on Murder, Inc. offices in early 2003. McGriff faced accusations of drug trafficking, while others with Murder, Inc. were indicted on money laundering and conspiracy to commit money laundering charges. McGriff is alleged to have had a hand in the 2002 murder of Run DMC member Jam Master J and was convicted of ordering the 2001 killing of rapper Eric E. Moneybags in retaliation for the death of McGriff's friend Colbert Black Just Johnson. Federal authorities also accused him in connection with the attempted murder of 50 Cent. On February 1, 2007, McGriff was convicted of murder for hire at a federal court in the Eastern District of New York on charges that he paid $50,000 to have two rivals, Eric E. Moneybag Smith and Big Nose Troy Singleton, gunned down in 2001. The jury deliberated for five days before finding McGriff guilty of murder and conspiracy to commit murder and drug trafficking. On February 9, 2007, McGriff was sentenced to life in prison. Throughout this case, he was defended by a public defender because nearly all of his assets had been seized. McGriff began serving his life sentence at ADX Florence, a federal supermax prison in Colorado. In 2011, he was transferred to the United States Penitentiary Lee, a high-security federal prison in Pennington Gap, Virginia. As of 2021, he is housed at USP McCrary in Pine Knot, Kentucky. Now, I always wondered why 50 Cent and Ja Rule's beef was so heated. And, you know, every time 50 Cent had a chance, he would take shots at Murder, Inc. and Ja Rule. Well, now it seems clear to me because, you know, this guy McGriff was hooked up with Murder, Inc. And I guess McGriff had tried to have um, 50 Cent killed. So that's why 50 Cent went so hard at Murder, Inc. and Ja Rule. It's clear to me now after reading, you know, doing my research on this stuff, of why, you know, how that beef was so heated. And, you know, they tried to kill 50 Cent. He was shot nine times. So, of course, if somebody shoots you nine times, you're going to go hard in the paint trying to get back at them. And that's exactly what 50 Cent did. You know, this guy McGriff, you know, uh, damn near took down Murder, Inc., even though they beat the case. You know, they spent a lot of money to beat that case. And as you can see, Murder, Inc. is no longer in existence because of what happened with the feds, which involved this guy here, McGriff, who put a hit on 50 Cent when he got shot nine times. So now it, it comes full circle. And I see why what that beef was really all about. And that's why 50 Cent was going so hard on Murder, Inc. and Ja Rule. USP ADX Florence, which opened in 1994, is classed as a supermax or controlled unit prison, which provides a higher, more controlled level of custody than a maximum security prison. The institution is unofficially known as ADX Florence or the Alcatraz of the Rockies. It is part of the Federal Correctional Complex Florence. It is operated by the Federal Bureau of Prisons, a.k.a. BOP, a division of the United States Department of Justice. 
During the 2020 COVID-19 virus outbreak, USP ADX Florence was considered safe due in part to the extreme social distancing already practiced. By January 11th, 2021, BOP data shows no active cases among prisoners, although there were 28 staff infections. ADX Supermax Florence houses 344 male inmates, each assigned to one of six levels. It is designed for 490 inmates, but has never been at full capacity. At least eight inmates have died or are suspected of dying by suicide at the facility. Critics claim the use of extended confinement in solitary cells adversely affects prisoners' mental health. Numerous studies support this conclusion. As of March 2015, settlement negotiations were underway with the help of a federal magistrate. Some changes have already been made by the Bureau of Prisons. Now, if I fail to mention, this, this prison is a 23-in-1, which means you stay 23 hours in your cell and you get one hour a day out of your cell. Kenneth Supreme McGriff, I hope I shed some light on what he did on his story and how he earned to stay at ADX, a.k.a. Alcatraz of the Rockies. Look out for my next series on Bombers Row at ADX. Uh, Bomber, Bombers Row consists of the Unabomber, the Boston Marathon Bomber, the Oklahoma City Bomber, and the Shoe Bomber. Rowdy Nation TV, click that like button, subscribe to the channel. We out.